Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 18th day of September. And you're probably wondering why I'm doing this over again. I deleted the one from earlier because it was off, because it froze up earlier, and I just figured that it's better just to try to do it over again. So I'm going to try it again, and hopefully we don't have any more issues. Amen. So um, those of you that watched this earlier, um, uh, so if you want to watch it again, uh, live, amen, or uh, through YouTube, um, those that watched it earlier, I uh, apologize about that, but uh, I'm going to do it over again, so amen. All right, so um, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. And today's topic is titled, My Glory Among the Gentiles, and that is God speaking, amen, so praise the Lord for that. And we're going to get started with today's scripture song, which is from Isaiah 1, 18. So if you're just joining, welcome. You can sing along, turn your Bible to Isaiah 1, 18, and we'll uh, sing with Brother Dean and Sister Patty, amen. All right. Isaiah 1, 18. Come, Come now, now, and let, let us reason together, together saith the, the Lord, though, though your sins be as scarlet. scarlet. They shall be as white as snow, they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. Let's right, sing it out. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sin like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. They sure will. And if you trust Jesus Christ today, your sins will be washed away, and they will be white as snow, and they will be as wool. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So don't wait uh, any longer. Get saved today and trust Jesus today, and you won't have to die in your sin and perish and end up in hellfire. And yes, hellfire is a real place, and God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and believe on his only begotten Son as their Savior. Amen. All right, so we'll do that again towards the end of the broadcast, but now it's time to get into today's topic, titled once again, My Glory Among the Gentiles, for this 18th day of September, and the passage is from Isaiah 66, verses 18 and 19, it says, For I know their works and their thoughts, it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory to the isles afar off that have not heard my uh, fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Isaiah 66, 18 through 19. All right, and today's author is uh, R.C. That is the initials for uh, Rex Cobb, and it says here he's from Baptist Bible Translators in Bowie, Texas. So let me read you what he wrote here. On this topic of my glory among the Gentiles. He says, uh, as I read to you what he wrote, God's plan has always been for his people, first Israel and now the church, to evangelize all tongues and nations, or in other words, all those who are not God's children. Amen. So, um, if you're a child of God, you're commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and that is what we are to do. Amen. So let's go do it. All right. So continuing on, he says here, one day, probably during the millennial reign of Christ, the Lord will send those who 
know him to those who don't, even to people who have not been friendly toward him, and those living in the uttermost part of the earth. God wants all to hear of him and his glory. God desires all to hear and believe the glorious gospel of his Son. One day, during the Great Tribulation, God is going to send a multilingual angel around the world preaching the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14, 6. And that's uh, during the um, Tribulation time. And um, so that doesn't have anything really to do with us because the church will be gone. And that is why we need to go out today and tell people about Jesus today so they have an opportunity and a chance to be saved before it's too late. Amen. All right. Continuing on, he says, Some, someone might say in his heart, if God is going to get the message out himself one day, why should I sacrifice my life or my resources? Hmm. Well, if you're questioning that and saying, well, you don't want to because there's somebody else going to do it, well, Jesus um, told us to do it today because today is the day of salvation. That's going to be a whole different um, time and different uh, message there during that time. And um, if you're not, if you don't tell people today and they don't get saved today, well, then that's it. They're, um, if they, if the rapture happens and they get left here, their, their time to uh, hear the gospel and be saved is over with. So, uh, make sure we do that today. So that's why you need to make sure that you don't question that. You do it because that's what Jesus said for us to do. And amen. All right. So again, he says, why should I? Go to some dirty, smelly place and deal with people that speak a strange language and don't act right. Because nobody acts right. Sometimes even uh, fellow uh, Christians don't act right. I mean, we all still sin in the flesh because our flesh is not saved yet. Alright, so continuing on, he says, I hope no one would say that with their lips. But I'm afraid many are saying it with their lives, right? With our actions and in our hearts. Hmm. Ought not to be... He says, I wouldn't want to face Jesus Christ, the Lord, at the judgment with such a disobedient, wicked, anti-missionary attitude or record like that. <laughs> yeah, right? So let's be careful and make sure we're not having that attitude where we're like, oh, well, somebody else can do it. I don't need to do it. I'm just going to sit at home and just do whatever I want. And um, somebody else can go out there and um, go on the mission field or go out there in the field or the harvest and do it and I'll just let them do it and I'll just uh, have an attitude of like uh, I don't care oh, well we shouldn't be like that we should have compassion on those that aren't saved yet and realize that Jesus uh, is long-suffering and doesn't want any to perish amen so let's go out there and tell somebody today all right so that is the end of the topic may or my glory among the Gentiles. And uh, so, also, um, let me grab this other book here. So I was reading this other devotional earlier, and it was really good. So I figured, well, since I'm doing the broadcast over again, might as well read this one to you too, because this one is kind of convicting also. And so this is from this other book I've been uh, reading, this devotional book. It's called Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier. And it's titled Boots on the Ground, written by Randy Wells. So let me read you uh, the devotion from this book also. It's uh, titled Exercise to Engage. And this is 18 September 1941 is um, when this uh, story takes place. And the passage is from 1 Timothy 4, 7-8. through 8. And it says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables. And exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having a promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. First Timothy 4, 7-8. Alright, and so he writes here, he says, In October 2017, I went to work for the office of the expector, uh, general at Edwards Air Force Base in California. My job title is Senior Exercise Planner, which entails planning and executing various types of mission assurance and war readiness exercises. And he continues on, he says, I help test the base ability 
to respond to contingency uh, situations, uh, these activities are extremely rewarding and they are part of a long tradition of military training. Uh, before the U.S. entered World War II, there was a great need for logistical training of large-scale maneuvers in modern warfare. To this purpose, the U.S. Army created the Louis Louisiana Maneuvers, a massive exercise involving over 3,400 square miles of territory. On a September 1941, or excuse me, on 18 September 1941, some 400,000 troops assembled in northern and west central Louisiana to evaluate uh, their training, uh, logistics, doctrine, and command. The soldiers were divided into two teams representing fictitious countries, and these fictitious countries were Kotmuk and Elmat. Uh, they were also called the Red Army uh, and Blue Army, respectively. Through the training, our troops gained valuable practice, ex uh, practice experience, and many of the officers who would become leaders of World War II proved their leadership potential. Uh, while physical exercise prepares a na uh, national soldier, spiritual exercise prepares a spiritual soldier. This is where it gets convicting here. Uh, how are you doing with exercising yourself unto godliness? Mm. Are you regularly engaging in spiritual disciplines that develop Christian growth? Uh, these include time in God's Word and prayer, regular church attendance, fellowship with God's people, and more. Hebrews 5.14 specifically tells us that there is some Christian maturity that comes only by reason of use, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses uh, exercised to discern both good and evil. Practice is the key to developing as a Christian soldier and being ready for the inevitable spiritual battle, uh, battles you will face. Ouch. So that was the topic there. Uh, making sure that we are exercising spiritually. Amen. Not just physically, but spiritually. Amen. So a lot of us tend to focus more on physical exercise, but then we tend to neglect all that spiritual exercise that we should be getting by all those things that I just read to you. Amen. So let's, excuse me, let's uh, make sure we're exercising spiritually more by getting in our Bible, going to church, listening to God's Word, fellowshipping with fellow believers, and talking about uh, Jesus and spiritual things. Amen. Amen. All right. So, let's see here. All right. So now we'll go ahead and get into today's hymn and hymn story. And this is the hymn, Joy to the World. And this is written by Isaac Watts and George Frederick Handel and arranged by Lowell Mason. <clears throat> All right. So, um, I'll sing you the hymn here, a cappella, and so apologize if my singing is not always that good, but um, amen. It's good to sing out to the Lord, amen, rejoice in the Lord, and sing praises to the Lord. All right, here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, wrecks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. 
No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, he doesn't rule the world right now, but one day he will rule and reign for all eternity and in the millennial kingdom. Amen. And uh, hopefully he's ruling and reigning in your heart today. Praise the Lord. So that's where it starts, uh, letting him rule and reign in your heart and in your life. And uh, so he might not be ruling in the world right now, but he can rule in your life if you'll just allow him to. After you're saved, that is. First, you need to get saved and Trust Him as your Savior, and then uh, allow Him to work and rule and reign in our hearts, amen, and in our uh, lives. All right, so that is the hymn. Now I'll go ahead and get into the story here, Joy to the World, written, uh, written in 1719, uh, and the passage is from Psalm 98.4. So let me grab my Bible here and read to this Psalm 98.4. All right, turn there, Psalm 98 and verse 4. Alright. So 98. 4. Let's see here. Alright, so it says here in verse 4, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise, and rejoice, and sing praise. Amen. And so, looks like this uh, psalm, psalm is all about singing out to the Lord. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Sing Praises to the Lord. All right, so go ahead and press play and read you the story here. <clears throat> All right, it says, Until Isaac Watts came along, most of the singing in British churches was from the Psalms of David. The church, especially the Church of Scotland, had labored over the Psalms with great effort and scholarship, translating them into poems with rhyme and rhythm suitable for singing. As a young man in Southampton, Isaac had become dissatisfied with the quality of singing, and he keenly felt the limitations of being able to only sing these songs. Uh, so he invented the English hymn. He did not, however, neglect the songs. In uh, 1719, he published a unique hymnal, one in which he had translated, interpreted, and paraphrased the Old Testament Psalms through the eyes of New Testament faith. He called it simply the Psalms of David imitated in the language of the New Testament. Taking various Psalms, he studied them from the perspective of Jesus and the New Testament, and then formed them into verses for singing. Amen. And he says here, I have rather expressed myself as I may suppose David would have done if he lived in the days of Christianity, Watts explained, and by this means, perhaps, I have sometimes hit upon the true intent of the Spirit of God in those verses uh, farther and clearer than David himself could ever discover. Uh, Watts' archenemy, Thomas Bradbury, was greatly critical of Watts' songs, which he called whims instead of hymns. He accused Watts of thinking he was King David. Watts replied in a letter, You tell me that I rival it with David. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh... Sorry about that. Let me go back here. All right. All right, hold on a second. I apologize. I didn't realize that I was going to run out of song there. All right. All right, continuing on. Uh, 
He says, um, uh, he accused Watts of thinking he was King David, and then Watts replied in a letter, You tell me that I rival it with David, uh, whether he or I be the sweet psalmist of Israel. I abhor the thought, while yet, at the same time, I am fully persuaded that the Jewish psalm book was never designed to be the only psalter uh, for the Christian church. Joy to the world is Isaac Watts' interpretation of Psalm 98, which says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Verse 4. As he read Psalm 98, Isaac pondered the real reason for shouting joyfully to the Lord. The Messiah has come to redeem us. Amen. Praise the Lord. The result, despite the now forgotten criticisms of men like Bradbury, uh, has been a timeless carol that has, has brightened our Christmases for nearly 300 years. And you can sing this hymn any day of the year, amen, not just on Christmas, amen, and we won't get into all that stuff about Christmas and how it's not really Christian, it's more pagan, so uh, you can go do your research on that, and of course Brother James has some good sermons on, on all that stuff, so amen. Alright, so that was a good hymn there, and hymn story, Joy to the World. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, I'll Praise My Maker While I've Breath, written in 1719. And this is another one by Isaac Watts, and it's probably by uh, Matthias Greitier, G-R-E-I-T-E-R. -E -E Amen. So that'll be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story, I'll Praise My Maker While I've Breath. Amen. Alright, so, praise the Lord. Okay, so now that's uh, done, we'll go and do the scripture songs again. We'll do yesterday's, and then we'll conclude with today's. So, if you're just joining, welcome, and hope you'll go back and watch this from the beginning, because it's a good uh, topic today. Amen. Actually, I read two different devotionals today, and they were both pretty good and uh, somewhat convicting. Amen. So, praise the Lord, and help us to be better Christians. Amen. All right, so yesterday's. Scripture song was Isaiah fifty four seventeen. First Oop. Corinthians ten. 20. Oopsie, sorry. There we go. Try that again. Isaiah fifty four seventeen. No, no weapon, weapon that, that is formed against, against thee shall, shall prosper, and, and every tongue that shall rise against thee shall, shall condemn. This, this is the heritage of the servants of the, servants of the Lord, and their, and their righteousness, righteousness is of me, me saith the Lord. Amen. Let's sing along. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. All right, now we'll end it with today's one eighteen. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. All right, let's sing this out. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. 
Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. They sure will. So if you come to Jesus today and believe on him and he becomes your Lord and Savior, he will wash away all your sin. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. All right. So that will be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's devotional topic. And tomorrow's the 19th and we'll sing 1 Corinthians 10, 21 through 22. And it says, Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Hmm. Those are some questions you really need to ask. Uh, amen. And we should know the answer. Um, amen. All right. So that would be tomorrow's uh, scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic is titled, We Need Him. Amen. And we sure do. And uh, praise the Lord. We'll find out more about that tomorrow. And John twenty twenty two b is going to be the... Um, scripture, amen, and that looks like there's some scriptures throughout the devotional too that we'll be reading, so amen. All right, and then, um, so that's that, and then tomorrow's uh, hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, I'll Praise My Maker While I've Breath, amen, and so the book here, right here, it's uh, titled Then Sings My Soul, book two, and I believe there's four books to this all together, and so you can go find those um, at the local bookstore, or you can probably order them off the internet at a bookstore online, amen. And then the scripture songs are available to order through CD, or you can download them through MP3 format at Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com, amen. And then, of course, uh, the devotionals, you can order them through this website here at www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Amen. All right. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.